Welcome to Best of Five. It's a great, awful starting joke. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> this week on the show, we're going to talk about pop-ups. We're going to talk about block grab. I'm going to stop offending everybody. And we're also going to have no, some quick won't. heats. No, we won't. No, we won't. I apologize. We got, like, With- it, for a while, it looked like there would not be a whole lot of, like, heavy news. <laughs> and then just... And then we just had to wait a couple of hours before we went live. That was it. Very true. Very true. Oh, man. As always, I am joined here with my two favorite people. First off, my favoritist. Who's going to be? I'm here, too. Who's it going to be? <laughs> oh, the new subscribe. I have to go with Steve now because he just resubbed. Uh, Steve. Because he gave you money? You're well, going he didn't with give I me gave money. Us Classic. money. Classic capitalist. I us money. This <laughs> is communism. Paid, is he getting paid? No. It's all on a PayPal account. You can go check it. I don't have... You know what? Steve, Ace King, Officer Jurek, the main squeeze here joining us this week. Steve, how's it going? Uh, You know, I'm a little bummed out about hearing about mm. Norm MacDonald's death. and That kind of is affecting me a little more than I expected. Yeah. Which sucks. Yeah, it's rough. Uh, I I just saw it too while I was uh, playing Deathloop earlier today, and it, it it hurts, especially growing up with Saturday Night Live for sure. So our thoughts go out to uh, the Norm Macdonald crew and family. On brighter news, joining us. On I the have show to follow too. that up. Really? That's. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Sorry. No, no, you're you're the light that is getting us away from the darker subject. So. Joining us on the show, as always, my other favorite co- uh, co-conspirator, co-host, person, human, entity, the all the multi-talented, the hardworking, the amazing, the purple shark. Why is it always on black women to carry after something terrible happens, dude? Why is it always on us? I just came here to talk about fighting games. I have to follow up that. Anyway, you should play Skullgirls. It's currently 10% off right now. Go to playskullgirls.sharpypls.com. And yes, everybody, yes, I am officially being paid to literally say that. I am officially, contractually a part of Future Club Dev right now, the current developers on Skullgirls. Thank you so much. I was a part of it last week, but I didn't get an opportunity to announce it until today. So thank you. Congratulations. So you get to give us all the information before it goes out into the world, right? Yeah. Violate all no the comment. NDAs. <laughs> NDA? More like go away. I or like give, my job. Actually, maybe give away. Would, would have I'm been a better. big fan of my job. <laughs> I know. No, her, just... her, her, N, her NDA stands for not denying anything. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm actually allowed to tell literally every single talk show about breaking news when it comes to Skullgirls with the exception of this podcast. Damn. They, Damn. they wrote it into my I, NDA. It's kind of crazy. I... I would it would it did it matter that I opened up with Norm McDonald before we introed you? I can't legally talk about that. <laughs> okay. Sometimes. Right. Okay. Thank you everybody for being here. Steve, Sharpie, chat, people on the YouTube, people on the listening devices. Welcome to Best of Five. I think I say we just dive right into it, shall we? Let's Steve. Do it. I think it's time for you to hit us. With that recap, will you? I think I can do that for you because we we had a couple big events this past weekend. Starting out with uh, week two of two hundred eighteen of Vortex Gallery. I kid. Uh, they're basic. They're basically taking over the month of September. They're actually bleeding into October because of that uh, bonus fifth week with the Guilty Gear Strive tournament, which is going to be nuts. Uh, but you had a whole lot of action this past weekend, uh, starting with uh, arms from all over the world. Uh, you had Ripa holding it down for Europe, uh, Twin 5 0, your arms champion. Uh, you had some great South American Blaze Blue uh, Central Fiction action. Uh, Puns, your winner in BB Tag North America. Uh, Thea, uh, Thea is your Fight of Animals champion for Asia. Uh, let's kick it over to that second screen, because we also had a lot of action in B-Save. You had Snuggle Guns, who's in the running for 
best name of the week, uh, winning mm-hmm. North America V Save, the Seeker, your South America champion. Uh, you also had some Melty, some Skullgirls uh, in there, Acido taking the Brazilian tournament. Uh, if you remember, no, 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 not Reseda. Or no, is it I said Acido. Acido, Acido is Acido. how it's pronounced. Yeah, I Acido. apologize. Is it? No worries. That's uh, what Reseda. I was told by the player, yes. Okay. So so we go with that. Uh, Reseda Fed- Federal actually finished fourth in that one. Hmm. So, so there's there's some killers in uh, the South, in the Brazilian scene. Uh, also, shout outs to Spababin for winning Jackie Chan in Fists mm-hmm. of Fire. The true game. The true game. And other end held off Santa with Muscles and a few other strong players to win the Windjammers title. Santa with Muscles. We'll see him again. Them again. Sorry. Uh, the other big event this past weekend, Riptide. This was the first sort of major opened Smash tournament. If you'll remember, this was the one that's kind of risen from the ashes of Smash and Splash. So you had almost 2,000 players uh, between all of the games. You had a bunch of Melee going on. You had a bunch of Smash Ultimate. And you had some Rivals of Aether. Uh, When it comes to Melee, IBDW holding it down getting the win, holding off his Panda teammate Plup in the grand final. Hungry Box rounding out the podium there. Uh, there a couple names in the running for name of the week in that list, especially the person who tied for 13th. His name is literally Bobby Big Balls. I am not making mm. that up. No, that's a, that's a local DMV player. Very famous inside of the Virginia area. Was personally trained by Cyram and uh, Chillin and a couple of very famous Virginia players. That's a real person. Yeah. That that is a real person. Thank you for <laughs> blessing us with the Bobby Big Balls lore. <laughs> As we go over to melee doubles, uh, Plup did get on the top step of the podium one way or another. He and Hungry Box. Uh, won the doubles tournament over Gatsu and Wizrobe. Uh, IBDW teamed with SFAT to take third there. Uh, if we look at Ultimate, uh, familiar name up top, MK Leo is your champion there, holding off Tweak. Spargo, another strong performance for them. Uh, two Mexican players in top three, three Mexican players in top eight with Meister. That scene is very strong. Very, very strong there. Um, uh, Luis and Send ended up as your champions of doubles. Uh, Spargo ended up in second, uh, teaming with Epic Gabriel. Uh, Elegant and Meister rounding out the podium in doubles. And I want to close it off for a couple reasons with the singles tournament of Rivals of Aether. Um, I'm not a big Rivals person, uh, but I did see the end of the set between Cake Assault and Penguin. It went down to the wire. Uh, If you get a chance to check that out, definitely check that out. Um, But something happened at the end of that set. Um, We have video of the closing moments of that grand final set. Uh, this is courtesy of BTS Smash here. Um, as you can see, it, it, it's tense. It goes down to last stock. And Cake Assault, you see the excitement. You see the hype. Is he okay? He, it, we thought he was overwhelmed with emotion. He was actually... He's not moving his other over- arm. Yeah, he's overwhelmed with pain. He popped off so hard that he actually pulled his left shoulder. He actually dislocated it. And he's still he's still getting hype with the right arm. 
that is commitment. That that's excitement. Mm-hmm. That is what the hype does to you. Have you ever been injured by a pop off? Not F- not just FGC, but anything. Yes. I was in eighth grade. We were doing fun day. It was like the last week of school. And <laughs> we were doing this thing where, you know, how you have like the giant skis where you have two people on each or two people trying to manipulate one pair of skis. Right. So you have to like coordinate. Well, when my turn came up, me and my buddy, we got first place. So my pop off was I dove off of the skis and I tried to do a somersault and look real cool. Broke my shoulder. It's pretty sweet. It was pretty sweet. I still went on to finish the day, and I threw some frisbees, threw some hoops with my good arm. So, take that, world. So, <laughs> so we were talking about pop-offs then, Steve. And I believe you asked us to do something. And we're going to showcase what we've done. So, you want to tee, tee it up for us? So this is, I, I feel like this is going to go down as one of the more memorable pop-offs in fighting game history. So I wanted to ask, what other games, or what other pop-offs are your favorite? Like, I, I, like I was thinking about it myself. I, I split it out to the, co- the my cohorts as well. And I just want to know what your favorite pop-offs are and what you love about them. So, Alon, I don't know. Do you have your third favorite? Uh, I do have my third favorite. And I believe you also picked this one, too. So I would rather <laughs> you go with yours first. I forget oh, which one I did. Oh, do not want to use mine? Do you have yours? Yeah. You asked me to prepare them yesterday. Was I not supposed you... to? Yeah. No, you are Okay. Let, lead off with yours. Okay. Go for it. So uh, my third most would have to be very obviously after uh, Goichi defeats Sonic Fox at um, at at Evo. In states, um, what did he say? What did he say in in Japanese? It was like a JoJo's reference. I don't remember. Oh, I, I forgot. About, you, but you you remember what it was, right? You remember how hyped that was? That mm-hmm. was. There was nothing like that for me. That was really good. And I'm I, I, the only reason it's on my third is because the other two moments I felt were much more personal and connected to me. And so I, I felt the pop out even more excited. Like, I still think about those moments today. But that, like, a lot of these pop-ups, I feel, while they are amazing for the entirety of the community, like, they don't have a lot of important significance to me as a Skullgirls player. But that moment was really, that was a really good moment. I think he said something like "You're already, you dead, already dead" in Japanese. Yeah. It? yeah, Blue just hit it up in yeah, the chat. Yeah, that's Thanks, what Blue. he said. Thank you. <laughs> I was, I was like, I feel like it was a Fist of Furies or JoJo's reference, and it was a Fist of Furies. Yeah. Ah oh, man, that was so. That was so good. He, they, they looked him dead in the eye, and <laughs> and and I was like, "Oh, Sonic's mad!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so good. That was so good. That was really good. I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch that because I remember watching it and being like, "Hey, that's great," but it I, was I don't really think good. I, I don't think I took away too much, so I'm definitely gonna have to go back and rewatch it. It's it's because leading up to that, the entire time they've been talking so much mess to each other through mm-hmm. streams, exclusively through streams. They were they were just doing it because they knew it would get back to the other person, and I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> I'm about this." And as someone who knew both of them, like personally, it was really exciting to watch. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, I felt personally invested in that. Uh, Do you want my other two or are we just going down the line? Uh, Let me do my third Mm -hmm. favorite. Is is this Um, titled as your third, Steve? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, And this one is, uh, it was Toy at Street Fighter League. Uh, After his squad beat beat Samurai Squad. Just, just look. At the The best part is you have the initial pop up, which is good. He goes, he, he he talks some trash, goes celebrates with his team, but it keeps going. It, it it's this second level that takes it up, where he goes back and then T poses to assert dominance. 
the T pose is it, it was good. You know, when he went out, he did the barrel roll. It could, and then you know you you expect it to kind of level off, but no, it just keeps ramping up in in, in intensity until it reaches the crowning achievement. It, it is just beautiful, beautiful. Ah, uh, the T pose to assert dominance. Did I? What happened? Am I still here? Can you hear me? There you are. Okay, I don't know what's going on with my machine today. I'm sorry. Uh, it is okay. There we go. Okay, so I guess it's time for me to hit you with my third favorite. And oddly enough, I talked about it last week. And I probably should have gone ahead and fast forwarded it to where it actually is. Here we go. So this is captured by our buddy uh, Esteban, the best Esteban over at Hold Back to Block. So this is at Apex, Brahim versus Smug. Oh, let's skip to the end. There's a lot of trash talk leading up to this. It's a whole documentary. It, look at that. The popcorn rain from Big E. That's that's my favorite part. <laughs> Here we go. 10 O smug 10 O's the popcorn rain. <laughs> Big E. <laughs> and he says, that's what you oh get for talking sh Oh, You a bum. Ten owed you the popcorn rain with the trash talk at the end. Man, it's my here's, third favorite. Here's my question: Was that just regular popcorn, or was that popcorn barren popcorn? Because I think that was popcorn barren. <laughs> if it was popcorn barren popcorn, that is spending a lot in both in both price and quality to <laughs> to get that that pop off going. So that is some extra bonus points. For if, sure, if it definite. <laughs> but yeah, and and again, I I mentioned this the last yesterday or yesterday last week. Oh, it was regular popcorn. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, okay, uh, bonus point lost. But I mentioned this last week when we were talking about it. The lead up to this, I think, is what makes it so great. Is watching Brahim Keys just talk all this mess on Facebook because he's winning locals. And something that's so funny that I completely had forgotten about until I watched this back is let me see if I can let me see if I can pull this up one more time. I just want to show you the very end of it. So there's a lot more trash talk. There's a lot more feelings. <laughs> sorry for the sorry for the big dancing. Look at the sign in the back. 37 and 1. What? <laughs> So Brahim Keys was talking this whole mess about how he won so many tournaments in a row. And somebody, and I think uh, the person who had brought that sign was actually Curtis, uh, the person who ran uh, Custom Beadworks. Or I think that was the name of the company. I'm sorry if I'm getting yeah, it wrong. Yeah, no, Dynamic Custom Beadworks. That, yes. That's, that's him. BCB he had brought Curtis. the sign 37 and 1 even before they started playing. Curtis is such a heel. <laughs> Curtis is such a heel. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh. But anyway, and like watching all of that build up to this and having it be captured by, you know, hold back to block. It's out in the world. And Double chef's it. kiss. Double chef's kiss. Thanks, Bestabon, for being the best, Bestabon. All right. Sharpie, hit us up with your second favorite. I wasn't aware that we were supposed to prepare videos, but what I did was I went ahead and put the video to the YouTube uh, inside of chat for Elon so that I could then proceed to vamp a little bit about this moment. My second moment would have to be Giga Itachi versus Sage inside of Dragon Ball Fighters, and that took place as a as as a part of my meddling. Actually, I was trying to uh, incentivize a lot of people from New York and New Jersey to come down to where I live in Maryland, specifically to Xanadu, to come play against some of our local players. So I was like, hey, everybody, if you win, you know, just uh, issue out maybe a friendly challenge, you know, to people um, and just tell them to come like down to Xanadu to come play us. Right. And that was my intention. So I was doing like winter interviews and everything. And Giga Itachi won the weekly um, and said, you know, this was free, super easy. I'm the best on East Coast. I'm better than Sonic Fox. I'm better than Lord Knight. I'm better than Flux. I'm better than To Kill Sage. I'm better than Nakiel. I'm better than Hook Gang God. Um, and no one can come. To me who can fight me nobody can right and not to kill sage but sage who's a new jersey player took particular offense to this mm -hmm. uh they proceeded to 
talk on Twitter and it became a $300 money match. Um, at the time, Giga Itachi actually didn't even have a console to play on. So I, I loaned him mine. And uh, he also didn't own the game at all at home. So I loaned him my copy of it on there, right? And then basically they went to go play. And my pop-up moment is after Giga Itachi loses 1-10 to 10 to Sage. And he only won the one match because of a technicality with uh, his Sage's cord coming unplugged and they gave it to Giga Itachi because he had more health at the point in time that the game was paused. So with that in mind, uh, if you have it open, I believe it starts at 2 minutes and 24 seconds. We have uh, Callie Mac on the mic. And the reason why this is one of my favorite pop-off moments is because while I think there are a lot of fantastic, over-the-top, really high-level people playing, I felt like this was a moment of authenticity at a local level that I saw personally, and uh, it just, it became really funny to me. Here we go. One more question, one more question. If he wants a part two, will you give it to him? Yeah, I would. Oh, that's all this I need to gonna hear. Be, it's it's 10 always not gonna be any different. Oh my God. Bro, I ain't even gonna, I ain't even oh gonna get my, my bag, God. bro. I ain't even gonna get my bag, bro. Because oh. honestly, honestly, you're just free. That's it, bro. That's it. That's it. No, 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 no. He keeps, he oh. keeps going. I'm sorry. Out of here. Yo, thanks to everybody who came out to watch. You know what I'm saying? I know it was bus ass. I wish the match was more interesting. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't determine the skill level of others. Right there! I can't so determine I the skill level of others! I just humbled him. That's what I came to do, actually. Yo, I'm I came to humble him. Cause he thought he was gonna be, what a, he thought he was gonna be Goichi, he thought he was gonna be Sonic Fox, and then he put my big homie up, say he gonna be Lord Knight, you not being him, and you not being me, ever, in any game, it don't matter what game it is, that's all I got to say. That's it. Oh, Look at Kelly's face. <laughs> 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 oh, that's, that's so good, that's so good, I don't care what anybody says, that's right up there, up there, with like, punk like and Justin doing a barrel roll for me and I feel like more moments like that need to be established inside of new FGC so <laughs> that was that was good that was good he said yep. doesn't I can't I can't determine anyone else's skill level I said ah <laughs> sucks to suck <laughs> sucks to suck oh um, let me go with my second favorite and this is a moment that lives in infamy within the mm -hmm. FGC but I feel like there's an aspect to this that gets fully ignored. This is from Evo a while back. This is the world, the Sports Center famous set between Woshige and Ogawa. This is, but Woshige thinks it's over. Go ahead and play it. And he 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 sees he's, he's celebrating. We know this part. We know this part. It, but I want you to watch Ogawa after this happens. Everyone focuses on Moshida. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is what happens when hype fulfills your your spirit. You do think you are not capable of doing. Ogawa walking in a circle. He collapses. He This man has no balance, but he is trying to balance himself. There he goes again. He's trying to give high fives. This man is not a high five giver. He's probably given two high fives in his life before that moment. Go go back to the high fives. This man is so your body has limits, and and when you but when the hype is in you, you oh are God. doing <laughs> this freeze frame. He missed the right hand. <laughs> This man, this, this man has... He, Ogawa is a man of many talents. He has so much ability in him. Rhythm, probably not that much. He, This man, I don't think he has ever been to a dance. Ever. I don't think he has well, ever been to a club. I get to say that about club. him. I, I, you can just tell. You, the, he does, You can tell he does not run in a social circle that goes to the club. But that's okay. That's what hype does to you. It, it, just, it just tells your body that you can do things that you just can't do. And you're yep. going to try it anyway. So that is why that's my, my, my second favorite pop-off. And one that gets very much overlooked.
Mm -hmm. Okay, Steve, we have a dilemma. Your favorite pop-off is my second favorite pop-off. Go ahead and play it as your number two. Okay. Let's play it as my number two. He said, I'm so confident my number one is better than yours. I don't care. (laughs) It's the same one. It's the same one. So I'll I'll, 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 I'll just go for it. We'll, we'll, we'll play we'll play them both out. We'll play them both out. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the tell him about himself pop off. This is Wolf Pro versus K Brad at final round 20. Tell him about himself. <laughs> Takes off the headphones. Now he can hear him. There is so much here. So, there is so much here. Yes. So first of all, here's here's first of all, the the pop off itself is worthwhile, right? Mm-hmm. But there is more. First of all, let's the PR Balrog, right to K Brad's right. <laughs> yes. The meme. Yeah. Right? We had the meme. We have the memes coming out of this. L.I. Joe going crazy. Look at L.I. Joe's eyes. He's, he <laughs> wants this. He wants this. We have the PR Balrog face. We have the pop-off. We have the second pop-off. Look at, look at L.I. Joe. Look at L.I. Joe. He's enjoy- he, this is all he's ever wanted. <laughs> and then we have the handshake, the salty handshake afterwards. It's everything. And it's everything. I- I think my favorite part of all this is also Yipes. You know, Yipes in his commentary heyday just going, ah, he didn't know what else to say. Let's listen. <laughs> what Let's else listen. do you say at that moment? Oh, oh, tell him about himself. Wait tell for him. him about <laughs> tell him about himself. Let him know tell him. Tell him about himself. Talk to him. Tell him about himself. Ooh. Tell him about himself. It's like, that's what I like to see. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> you mentioned so much that made it my number one, but but uh, there was one other aspect that that you overlooked. Okay, we'll go back to it. Yeah, go. Uh, we'll go, go back ahead. to it. We'll go back to it. We'll go back to it. Because because I want to see it again. To be completely honest. All right, <laughs> Sharpie, hit us with your number one. Uh see, I'm kind of biased because my most hype moment of all time is winning on stream off a of pixel victory. And putting out my hand to shake someone else's hand, and then they deny me the handshake, and I get it on stream, and then that person proceeds to go on commentary, and and everyone assumes that they're not going to go on commentary because they just got like reverse fived one on stream by someone that they had <laughs> called really really bad on Twitter previously. So, but I don't want to. I don't want. I feel like I consistently talk about that moment. Because I'm so biased towards it, so everyone knows the moment I'm talking about. If you look up the, ser- if you give search to purple sharpie, you'll see two gifts: one of me refusing to shake someone's hand, and then one of someone refusing to shake my hand. Uh, <laughs> is that the sharpie legacy? You don't. Uh, that you is hate literally my... so much. No, no handshakes. That's a grab. You know what's funny is he was actually playing a grappler, and That's I really funny, genuinely yeah. thought I was going to lose. His his <laughs> his, his his team was Beowulf. Uh, Big Ban and Double and Beowulf is a grappler mm-hmm. character heavy, and so I was very terrified. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it was it was it was just really funny to me because I went into that thinking I was gonna lose and then I didn't. It was very funny and it's still like one of my favorite pop offs to watch. I can watch it over and over and over again and tell people about it all the time, despite mm-hmm. whether or not they already know it. Blue's even like I knew it. It's like, yeah, no, every I don't feel like there's any secret <laughs> that I'm a narcissist and I love watching myself beat that man. It's very enjoyable for me. Hey, at the end of the day, this is our favorite pop-offs. It's not anyone else's favorite pop-off. So, hey, yeah. good on you for... Being for, super biased towards myself? Yeah, no, I agree. For, for owning up to the moment, I think is the best. Like, is that... I, there was, there's yeah. been nothing in my tournament experience like it, by the way, mm-hmm. ever in my yeah. life. Nothing like that moment right there. Like I can still like feel the way that I felt then, and mm-hmm. I, I was, it was od, dude. I just, I remember <laughs> literally crying as soon as I put down my controller. <laughs> it was, it was, that was, that was the, that was the, ooh, that was the crack. That's okay. Awesome. 
That was the crack cocaine. The cocaine. Steve? We, We're going we back. Already know, we already know what it is. Tell it's him about Wolf it himself. Crone, we, we, we're going to tell him about himself. Wolf Crone versus K-Brad. This is, this is the highlight of the feud. Uh, it would go on for a while and include that rent-a-cop thing at mm -hmm. E-League, which yep. is a whole other conversation. Mm. And, and there's so much you pointed out. If you pull it back up, it's just so beautiful. Like, there's something else you see every single time. But here's my favorite part coming up. Because <laughs> eventually, Wolf Crone is going to, you know, once the headphones come off, he Keep is going to <laughs> nod. He's going to nod and he's going to applaud as if somehow that invalidates everything K Brad's saying. <laughs> This man is trying to hold back and he is taking he is taking imminent chip death. <laughs> Wait, what year was that? Was that 2018? No, it was 2017, I believe. Yeah, it was the, the year first before year before Dragon Ball? Yeah. Street Fighter, right? Yeah, yeah. that was 2017. Okay. Fun fact. I, all I remember is being at Dragon Ball and commentating Dragon Ball the final round, and then there was a huge, there were a bunch of huge people like just abandoning the Dragon Ball setups and going to a setup over there, and I was just mm -hmm. like, "Ooh, was that one of the moments?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this was this was before Tekken was out, I think. Yeah, it's before Dragon Ball, before Tekken. Yeah, before Tekken Seven was out on console, because uh, they had the setups there at final round, and this was also the first final round that was at the convention center. Fun yeah. fact. I got put into losers by Ben R.D. That's my claim to fame. And then he won Capcom Cup that year. Yeah, so, you know, you almost won Capcom Cup. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so my turn for my favorite. And this one's a multiple parter. I do apologize. <laughs> but this was NEC 2013. All the way back in Philadelphia. Born and they raised. Had, say again? Born and raised. Born and raised. Uh, they had an exhibition with Sanford Kelly versus Aqua Silk. And this is what happened. Thank you to uh, hey. Face Monster. Oh! That's how you finished them? Oh, it's all. That's uh, how you finished them? Yeah. He did it on purpose. Like that. This like ain't that. staged. You can't stage an ass whooping like that. Wow. You don't stage that. No one in their right mind would stage a beating like that. So Sanford Kelly starts packing up, but he says, "Hold on, hold on a second. He called. Yes, yes. Get your butt up here. It's PR Balrog. He wants. He is out for more blood. This man popped off so hard that he wanted the controller. Whoa." Now, we don't have the match footage. However, I'm going to let you know how that went. Because if you think this pop-off is over, it is not. There's a part two. This man popped off so hard, he wanted to play more. He wanted to play bigger players. After the match, this happened. Thank you, Base Monster. Sanford Kelly. Shakes his hand. Thinks he decides... Uh oh, hold on, we're not done here. What? Where is he? Where is he? Point him out. Bring him on the stage. Who's he calling up? Who's he calling up? It's Justin Wong. It's Justin He's calling Justin out? What? How have I never seen this? And then they proceed to play a match, and I believe Justin beat Sanford Kelly then. <laughs> Yo, pick a top tier. Pick a top tier. Pick a top tier. Man, I kind of miss, and I, I feel like, uh, what was it? Est we were just talking about Esteban the Besteban over at Hold Back the Block. He made a video recently about uh, how the FGC and AEW and WWE are similar in the sense that AEW feels more grassroots and it feels less sterilized. This is one of those moments that I think has been missing in the FGC for a while. Like, and I know, I know it's because costs were in ballroom or we're not in ballrooms anymore. We're in 
uh, convention centers, we're in uh, Evo hotels, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact that after an exhibition, you could go, hey, I want to play you next on this stage right here, and we don't mind going late because we don't have to pay extra. <sighs> okay. Speak for yourself, I mean, but okay. Well, I mean, this is just a thought. Or, or I think it was one of those things where, you know, if we could go back in time and remove mm -hmm. all the harassment and verbal oh, yes. abuse no. and sexual abuse and, you I know, agree. very, very horrible, horrible way that we treated people who were not visibly male and cis mm -hmm. and very I, I possibly Caucasian or black um, inside this community. Yeah, it would be fantastic to get back to that. I agree. I 100 percent agree with what you're saying. Harbor, it's it's hard for me. It's hard for I me. I understand. Because, I understand. like, my very first experience was, like, entering an environment like that, and I was not well-received mm. at all. So it's yeah, like... No, I, I, un I it's understand. It's hard for me. Yeah, I understand and I agree. I think all I mean is just... That energy level. I yeah. agree. Or, I get like having, it. I or even just having the ability of being so comfortable on the stage where you can just go, hey, I want to play you next, and I know they're going to run it. <laughs> Right? Well, I think that's why, but I think that's why of the moments that I chose, all of the moments that I chose were mm -hmm. like literally in the last three years, right. all of them, like in the reason, well, no, even, even the Sonic thing was in the last mm -hmm. three years. Yeah. And the reason I did that was because a lot of people have said that if it was like pre basically 2015, like that was when you could have fun at events, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I noticed that a lot of your events were biggie events, right? And I'm not trying to harp on E or anything, but like they do run very late. And yep. a lot of games don't get shine when games don't run according to schedule. Mm -hmm. The thing the thing I liked about my moments was that my moments were exhibitions at these things, right? They had been cultivated moments. They had been chosen to be shown because there was a large public interest for it. And mm -hmm. I think that still exists because the moment that I chose with uh with Callie Mac and Gigitachi and Sage, that was at ECC that was at ECT. And it started mm -hmm. out a local. You know, um, yeah. and then it grew to ECT, which was beautiful. Uh, my moment was at Combo Breaker. Combo Breaker was allowing us to have like, I think a five hour block where we just showcase Skullgirls salt matches. Mm -hmm. Like things like that, I think actively help build up the community. And I think they're still available in, in the community today at a point where everybody can enjoy them. They're not arguably just people spewing hate, you know, because like, I think we can all agree that Stanford said some things that I don't think anyone re would repeat in polite company, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's like, I think that these moments still do exist and they are ad nauseum uh, for a lot of, especially new players. But because a lot of people inside of the fighting game community are older and have been inside this community for, I would say, 10 plus years now, it's really hard to find moments uh, with the newer FGC that mm -hmm. they're creating all these fantastic moments. Like that moment I showed with Sage, he was cussing up a storm, mm -hmm. you know? And Sage isn't like the most respectable player, to be very honest with you. Like he has some he has some baggage too. But I I feel like that was still more refined than some other moments I've seen. You know? Like it's yeah. it's definitely I... a mixed bag. And my point with all of it is is that I, I only bring it up because I've heard this conversation so much and I'm not trying to pick on you, Elon, but mm -hmm. I just, I feel very strongly. No, you strongly... can pick on me. It's fine. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> no, I, I, cause I know where you're coming from. It's a place of love and understanding. And I mm -hmm. think we're both inside that same place. My point is, is that I think that the culture of the fighting game community hasn't changed as much as people think that it right. has. I think people just aren't looking for it in the same in the newer games anymore because it definitely exists in Dragon Ball Fighters. It mm -hmm. definitely exists in Strive. It definitely is going to exist in Melty Blood. But if you're not a part of these new players, you're not watching these moments be created organically. You're watching the old players who don't really have interest in doing that anymore because they're sponsored. Yep. So if no, you watch and... the new players, it, it exists mm -hmm. ad nauseum yet again. Yeah, and that was going to be my next point is that uh, I think during NEC... Uh, in 2013, that was the only stream that was happening that weekend, as far as I know, mm -hmm. as far as like mm -hmm. a major tournament, right? Yeah. So there's so much more in the FGC now that it, I feel like, yeah, there is a lot of stuff out there that we're not fortunate that is not getting thrown in our face because it's not the only thing happening every weekend or in that weekend, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I 100% agree. And I do 100% agree with the fact that it is still out there. And I would love to see more of it. I guess that's on me to go look.
let's let's all commit i think would be a really just as a final point before we move into our fantastic next segment by our amazing host here my final thought is i feel like we should all (laughs) a little bit just so you don't cut me off on my next 15 second rant but i feel like as older members whoops yeah of course yeah steve okay (laughs) i'm sorry it was oh no you know why do i even why do i even bother saying nice things about you that anymore bro like (laughs) it was my stream um, deck's fault I'm sorry. Go on. Who bought the stream deck, though? I did. Mm-hmm. A- anyway, anyway, my point with all of it is, is I think all of us older members now currently like possible community pillars, mentors, and even people that just play like non-competitively. I think we have a certain responsibility to find out these new players and showcase our history and, you know, also sponge up some of theirs like their energy we may not have anymore i can't be out until 1 a.m in the morning yelling because i have a job now i have to commentate i can't just lose my voice getting hype at you know carl losing to sonic 13 like i can't do that anymore you know but i feel like if we share our stories with the younger generation and we let them know what we did it's like this community that same energy they'll be able to propel into their generation of fighting games and we'll be able to move forward in an even more positive manner. And maybe it won't be the same as it was 10 years ago, but we should all be thankful that we experienced positive and negative moments and that the next generation hopefully won't have to encounter as many negative moments as we did. And that's been your section with Sharpie. Thank you, Sharpie, for those very lucid points. And I 100% agree. Sharpie, Steve, guess what? What? It's time for a block grab. Block grab! Grab block? No, Steve, it's block grab. This segment was on this show before I was on this show. (laughs) Elon, I thought you were going to do the block grab sound effect, and then I was going to follow up with it. Last time we synced it together. Yeah, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. I didn't do I'm a voice actor. You guys can hire me at biz at sharpiepls.com. I am open to contract work. Hire this lady, will you? Now, on this week's Block Grab, we got a couple trailers. This is going to be a quick one. Here is our first trailer. Oh, it's a vampire. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Dead Apostle. S- 17 marriages. How old is she? <laughs> look, look. I watched this. I watched this before I loaded it in, and I did not notice any of that. Has Twilight just sort of skewed things for us all? <laughs> I mean, if he's a vampire, it makes sense that he's been married 17 times. I'm sorry, <laughs> dead apostle. What's the difference? Uh, all right, Sharpie, black grab. On That's going to be a grab for me. I really liked that air cancel. You saw it, right? Mm-hmm. The air it canceled and then dashed back. I don't, I don't know if that uses up meter or any special or anything like that, but that's going to be a huge game changer for me. 100%. Steve, block grab. I've, I've been through one divorce, and that sucked. I do not envy anyone going through 16 of them, so I'm going to block for his own sake. Just take some time and work on you, bro. <laughs> All right, next trailer. I can't follow that. Wait, up. Elon, what about you and chat? Uh, oh yeah, chat. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Block grab. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna block because vampires don't spew lightning, but this guy does. He's a dead apostle. True. Very true. Blues uh, grab. See- yeah, I'm seeing 100% grabs. Grabbage. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Next. And I, I gotta tell you, I'm a big fan of this one. Here it is. Your next block grab. <gasps> okay. Okay, infinites with literally no defensive options. What's up? It's Adam Park, baby. But here's the thing. This ain't even the best part about it. Who wants Doggy Kruger? <laughs> Dude, what? I'm I'm good at what? Poisandra. Oh my god. But here's the thing, this isn't even all of it. 
Rita Repulsa's back, there we baby. Go. There we go. <laughs> this is more my speed. Oh, they're just they're just pandering. They are like, we know, we know what you all wanted. We know what you all wanted. And we got it. <laughs> Sharpie, block or grab. That's a block for me. I don't I don't touch Power Rangers. I I <laughs> I play Skullgirls and I will not play that game. That that game scares me. Okay? <laughs> that game scares me. I know there's some BS in Skullgirls, but I still know that when I play Skullgirls, it's because I'm bad. When I play that game, I feel like I regret ever of touching a fighting game in my life, dude. Like that, there are real infinites in that game. There are real unblockable setups in that game. I don't, I don't touch that. I don't mess with that. Any game that's like, oh yeah, your answer is to literally not get hit. I don't play games like that. That ain't me, honey. I will play Skullgirls, the boot town down, baby. I will do it, but like I won't. I won't play power. No, I'm sorry. All right, so that's I, a block. Respect to everyone who does. <laughs> respect to y'all, but ooh, ooh, I love myself. All right, chat, start typing blocker grab in the chat while I check in with the main squeeze. Steve, blocker grab. The first two characters were split with me, um, but Rita, Rita pulled me in. Uh, mm. I'm gonna grab. I, like I said, she's more my speed. I was. I was down with Power Rangers for like the first two seasons, <laughs> and then uh, I'm, you know, it just wasn't my thing. But Rita might actually get me to she if if anything's gonna tempt me in that pack, it's gonna be Rita. So I will grab. Nice. Uh, for me personally, I grew up with Rita Repulsa on my TV and all the Power Rangers fighting her. So that's a grab for me. Cherry on the cake. Icing on the icing on the cupcake, Doggy Kruger. I just want to say for the record, Blue and Chack said, by the way, Sharpie is right about unblockable and infinites. For the record, in case anyone for whatever reason didn't believe me, that's a that's a that's a vouch right there. Yeah. <laughs> like I just I I'm not I'm not making up stuff about the game. I wouldn't do that. You guys know I'm very fair to all games and I try very hard not to like talk mess about them especially if i don't play them like that but this game genuinely has those like and it's 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 not something that's been fixed in any patch so what? i just no ah, i believe you <laughs> i haven't played it so i can't say anything but with that said though doggy krueger rita repulsa i'm in let's do it all right last but not least well actually second to last but not second to least we got a we got a, a brand new one. A brand new one. What is brand new, you might ask? It's this. What you waiting for? Oh baby, get ready. There we go. Who's that? Knowledge? They're a cartoon that was on like Fox or something, right? Nickelodeon. That's why it's in the Nickelodeon game. It's like right there. It's like right there. I'm gonna have to take your word for it. It's also on Adult Swim for a little bit. Oh Nick really? Adult yeah, they had huh. the Adult Party cartoon version of it. On on Cartoon Network, not Nickelodeon. Yep. At least I I believe it was in Cartoon Network, right? It was on Adult Swim. Uh, for like a, the like the first iteration of Adult Swim. Oh, was it Spike TV? I'm sorry. Yeah, it was Spike. It was when they were okay. doing that and Stripperella. Wait, and... was it like after Cat Dog? Cat Dog was a good show. Was it like after that? Was it the same artist? No, no, no. no, no. Uh, the w one of the co-creators, his name is Bob Camp. I got to meet him actually at one of the comic cons here in Austin. Super nice dude. Uh, but. Uh, I had a, a jazz band director who knew I watched Ren and Stimpy, and he would mm -hmm. always say, Stimpy, you idiot, whenever I messed up. So I'm a fan. So it was like Pinky and the Brain? Kind of. It had that kind of same vibe, except it was a lot more grotesque Steve and disturbing. Steve thinks I'm memeing very hard right now, and I am not. Like, <laughs> you people have now unlocked the fact that I was a poor child who did not have access to pop culture growing up. And I literally Jeez. gleamed all of it in, like, college. I, I really heavy. I didn't grow up watching Power Rangers. We weren't allowed to watch Power Rangers or Pokemon. So it's, like, all of this pop culture that everyone has for the 90s, I had to force myself to mm -hmm. learn in, like, the, the early 2000s. It happens uh, to the best of us. Have you ever been watching a football game 
with someone who knows absolutely nothing about football? Like football or American football? Either one. Either one. Well, I don't watch it, it, American football, so yeah. I had to go to my homecoming and I didn't understand it all. I just I just sat there watching people hit each other. Very anyway. Confusing. I'm so Sharpie, grab. Steve, that's a grab. I, Sharpie, I don't block know what grab. I'm grabbing. I don't know what I don't know what they did. I don't know. I don't understand how true any of that is to their show at all. And he didn't say the uh, word idiot at all, so I can only assume that that's not a good characterization of him. Well, here's the thing. This is something that's really interesting about Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl is we have not heard any of these characters speak. We haven't heard any of these characters speak. We haven't heard any of the musics from the show. All we've seen is just stages and characters. And, and what I assume is just like some royalty-free music. Well, or something that they've produced in-house. Mm -hmm. That actually kind of scares me about this game. Um, mm -hmm. Because when you think about it, if you, you know, obviously it's a platform fighter. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at something like Rivals of Aether or any of the Brawlhalla, they are sold first and foremost as platform fighters. And then, oh, we also have some cool new characters we created. That's not the selling point here. The selling point is, man, this is such a Nickelodeon nostalgia bomb. Remember all these characters from your childhood? It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah, it's also a platform fighter, by the way. So PlayStation All-Stars. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it's ki kind of... Not exactly. The, well, the, the marketing thing, the marketing is very similar, right? The marketing is all about nostalgia. It's all about, hey, remember this character? Hey, remember that character? But, you know, if you don't have the voices, it's going to feel very, very different. And it, it does look very solid as a, um, as a straight-up platform fighter. Uh, they... They've actually released some of some more mm -hmm. in-depth videos that show wave dashing and some of the other mechanics, and it looks like a legit game. It looks like there's going to be a good amount of depth to it. But yeah. I don't think that that Nickelodeon's top priority here is you know putting out a game with depth. It's about you know selling a game that does well in a market. And without voice acting, with it, it's not going to feel like a complete love letter, like something like, uh, like Smash Brothers is, or to a lesser extent, PlayStation All Stars. That sort of worries me about the the long term success of this game in general, because it can be successful at you know within the FGC, but in order to have a significant life. It needs to find success outside of that, and that worries me. Yeah, and what's kind of weird about it too is like you can tell that. Uh, so they've been doing character breakdowns, and unfortunately, we're not, we don't have enough time to watch them on the show because they're like five, ten minutes long. <laughs> uh, and the people explaining the character, you can tell whoever wrote the script, whoever is behind this game, is very knowledgeable and very passionate about. Uh, smash or about like platform fighters in general they use the word wave dash and uh a lot of the options that they have added it, it feels like it's their version of what they wanted smash to be and i don't i don't mean to compare the two but what i mean by it is this after you uh do an air dash you could still do uh you could still have movement options after you Ooh, air really block, you don't yeah. lose your movement options after dashing in the air no you that's can still huge. do movement so you options. still you retain the jump yeah. And you can still... Okay, that's really, really good. That's yeah, you important. can grab people out of the air. You can grab projectiles and stuff out of the air. You can hit projectiles back. It's like it's it's like it looks like this amalgamation of fighting game mechanics mixed into a platform fighter. And it looks super fun. And it looks like it's very well taken care of from a passion and from a knowledge standpoint. The stuff on top of it, like missing the voices. And even while I was watching some of the breakdowns, uh, listening to the music, it's a little tough. It's a little tough, especially I, I don't think I would mind the, the voices all that much, but listening to some of the music that they had, I, and I really hope it's just like a placeholder, but who knows? It was a little tough to sit down and watch five minutes of uh, the glove. And, and I love glove rolled. I love SpongeBob and I love the glove rolled stuff, but sitting down and watching like uh, or listening to like the 
circus music that didn't quite feel like a part of anything was really tough. So I hope it's not a licensing thing where they can, uh, where they can't use voices and music. Wait, did I say I hope it's not a licensing thing? Anyway, I hope it's a, I hope it's a situation where it's not made and not a situation of they can't use it. I think it's what I'm getting at. What I will say is that with all of the news, um, I haven't had an opportunity to obviously watch the breakdowns yet because I, I think the, this news came out earlier today, right? Um, I haven't actually, to be very honest with you, one of the reasons why I've been kind of like putting off looking at advanced tutorials regarding this game is because I want to give it a fair shake. Mm -hmm. um, and the very last like platform fighter I really played was Melee. So I, I'm already really biased because I was very competitive in that game. And there are a lot of things that if I see something and it, it turns me off the game, it could ruin my entire experience. And I don't want to be that unfair to a game before I get to, to play it, really. But what I will say is that especially with all the news of how Nintendo's coming down on PM and, um, and other versions of modded versions of, of Smash, uh, it's very exciting to me see the prospect of someone who was very enamored with melee or another version of smash to make a love letter through nick nick elodian tunes you know mm -hmm. like that's inspiring to me and i really genuinely hope that comes through in the actual gameplay and not just in these very carefully curated videos that we're seeing right now because while I think, obviously, if they didn't have the original voice actors, it would be a huge disappointment to a large yeah. number of people. I think it would be even more of a disappointment if ultimately this did go down the same route as PlayStation All-Stars and it wasn't deemed as competitively viable, to be mm. very honest with you. That would be more of an unfortunate situation because then you would have a whole list of people who, like, I'm going to just be real about it. You could look at the PM team right now and while they may not be super excited about the way that Nintendo's treating them, they could very easily move into the Nickelodeon All-Stars realm. And maybe Nickelodeon has a more positive approach to the competitive aspect because they want to get a foothold in, right? All it takes is one really, really good mod or really, really good developer to get on that team. And now there's a competitor to Super Smash Brothers franchise, a real competitor, you know, and it doesn't matter what characters are put aside of the game because you could just add anything. You could add Doug Funny. You could add, I don't know, someone said like Clarissa or something like that, that is Sabrina the Teenage Witch, all of that. You could add all of that inside of the game and people will just love it based off nostalgia. Like, I think what people are trying to establish right now, like you said before, is the nostalgia route. But I feel like the mechanic route matters more for the longevity of the game. And I feel like there's already a very good branch of people who are going to play the game exclusively because of nostalgia but if they don't ram that point home nobody's going to play it see my counterpoint to that psychonauts great game I never played by... that game. exactly it's a great game by everyone's account except it didn't do well commercially and it ended up getting pushed to the side for a long time mm -hmm. you know it has to you know the fgc i love the FGC. We just have to realize how small we are relative to the general gaming audience. You can hit a home run with us that ends up being a ground out in in the general gaming audience. So you have to somehow you have to find success in order to be financially viable. So I I I really do hope that they're able to do it because it it does feel like they, you know, at least in terms of move set, it feels like they're putting a lot of care into that, a lot of care into the mechanics. Uh, it's just the other stuff that makes the game a complete package. That's mm -hmm. where I I'm starting to worry. Yeah, a lot of I people. I do also. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say a lot of people, myself included, and Blue in the chat. Uh, it feels like that's what happened with MVCI, where gameplay, amazing. Packaging and controversy around it, awful. The yeah, issue with MVCI I, I, was UMVC3 was the game before that. Like 90% yes. of the fighting game community loved that game. The animation style was completely different. And it also came out at a point in time when literally Dragon Ball Fighters had come out before that game. Mm -hmm. So it was like very difficult, I feel, for that game to be marketed because there was already so much negative 
press regarding how the game looked and how it appeared. And then there was a bunch of leaks because just aesthetically, it looked significantly different than any other game out there. Compared to Tekken, it looks better. It looks better than Street Fighter. It looks better than a lot of other games. But like, I feel like MBCI was different. What I wanted to say before I... Oh, I'm sorry, Steve, you have something. No, you go ahead and make your point. Uh, that I think one of the reasons why we're not seeing voice acting is because voice acting is one of the very last things they put in to the character development cycle when they're actually developing games, so they may not have actually hired voice actors yet. And even if they can't get the licensing right for the specific phrases from the shows, they can get voice actors to emulate certain things and just use that instead. That's legal. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. Uh, Do keep in mind, a lot of the previous Nickelodeon games... uh, like the 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 kart racing games, their baseball games, they don't really use they they haven't really hired uh, actors to come in and do voices. If they do do anything, they just pull clips straight from the show. What? Yeah, they they just uh, play show clips, but or or like they pull audio from the show itself. Why would they do that? Or from the. To, to, to do the famous lines without uh, having to bring in the actors again. But what I was going to say is, you know, you mentioned some of the other things uh, Marvel Infinite was up against. Let's also forget, not forget, it wasn't just because it was following up uh, Marvel 3 uh, in terms of being a sequel, but it was following up the launch of street fighter five it was following up street fighter cross Tekken. it was following up a whole bunch of other capcom missteps there was so much baggage on top of what was going on with marvel infinite that that sort of dragged the whole package down Mm -hmm. Uh they don't have to necessarily deal with that here so it, it it's you know it's I don't want to make that comparison just yet. Exactly. Because exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Fair. I feel Fair. like I feel like in addition, just last thing on MBCI, I also feel like one of the reasons why Capcom came out with MBCI when they did was specifically because they needed a win and they knew the Marvel community was still here and they would take it. Mm-hmm. You know. So it's like I don't was- see Nintendo as that same in that same boat at all right now. Now, if Nintendo proceeds to come up with another game immediately after this. Where they're just like, yeah, by the way, it's Smash, and we did everything you guys wanted. Now buy this thing. Like, pandering, but they do it super terribly. You know? It's, it's hard. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't equate to me. And I'm only saying it because it was, it was so heavy in chat. Like, it's, it's, it's just really hard for me to see it the same way. And I totally understand your, your thought process, Steve. Oh, it's very fair. Very fair. Um, Steve, did you have any final thoughts on this tangent before we... No, we should probably move on okay. to the last... We have, uh, we have one more block grab. Oh, here it is. Speaking of Capcom. And then basically... Oh, and there's Jim. Wow, it's... Mega Man! Cyborg Akuma. <laughs> the cyborg version of Akuma, just in case you didn't know <laughs> what it was. <laughs> now buy or pass. <laughs> so obviously a throwback uh, to the original MVC, mm-hmm. or the Marvel Marvel versus Street Fighter, excuse me. Yep. Uh, so Sharpie, block or grab on Cyber Akuma? It's cute. Not worth $60, though. That's a block for me. It's the costume. I don't think the costume is sixty dollars. The season the pass entire... is sixty dollars. That's what they. That's what they posted in that previous thing. It said forty nine ninety nine, not is including really? tax. I, that's what I paid it said. for it. <laughs> I paid for it. So I, did I just pay sixty dollars for no reason? Oh no. <laughs> uh, okay. It's the game with the premium pass is sixty dollars. The game. With the or the uh, lower version of the game, just Champion Edition, with the premium pass is fifty dollars. The regular Champion Edition is twenty nine or thirty. Upgrade kits twenty five. And I think the I think all of the pricing that they put on here is just like for if you don't have the game already, which is really dumb. Why would they put that on there? Uh, but yeah, I totally so agree. So I that's, no, yeah, that's you're, a, that's you're a block 100% for me. Correct. <laughs> so block uh, chat. 
give us the blocker grab. I'll come back to you guys in a second. Steve, blocker grab on the Cyber Akuma. I'm torn. Uh, part of me wants to block because you know, the the uh, Cyber Akutramon. The cost for that, by the way. Yeah. The Cyber Akutramon look very plasticky mm -hmm. here, but in the original, they look very plasticky. So... If if you want that throwback feel, I I would grab. I would rather see like a slightly more modernized take on that versus you know a straight up. So I will I will personally block, but I yeah. I respect anyone who grabs. Yeah, I'm gonna block as well, and here's why. Anyway, chat. Uh, good reasons. Good grab. reasons. Good reasons. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Oh man, I feel like we're on family food. Show me that was that. Uh, show me botch dancer. Yep. Ding 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 ding. There it is. <laughs> uh, we got we're 50-50. We're 1000% 50 .50. grab and a block. So that will end today's blocker grab. I'm going to do the 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 thing again. Do the one. Block grab. Block grab. All right, that was block grab. What now, a fun segment. It's a great segment. I'm glad we retooled it. Will you, this thing stay on the screen? Thank you. I don't know if you guys saw this, but this week, I, I think I saw I saw it this morning. I think it came out yesterday. There was a giant, gigantic, ginormous leak for the GeForce Now uh, system. For those of you that don't know, GeForce Now is the... Uh, <laughs> Sharpie, I saw <laughs> Uh, I was G like, what was the leak for? <laughs> <laughs> Who did the leak? <laughs> GeForce Now is the cloud gaming. It's the Google Stadia. It's the uh, Xbox cloud gaming version of uh, NVIDIA's system. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're basically trying to uh, get into the market with cloud gaming via the GeForce Now. And there was a gigantic leak with a gigantic list of a lot of games, including some FGC games. Now, obviously, NVIDIA has written out a statement trying to either deny or confirm. Trying not to deny or confirm. Uh, but Steve, I think you have a, couple, a little bit more info on that, don't you? So yes, uh, for a brief period of time, people who uh, were using GeForce Now were able to access a database that contained a list, uh, a massive list of games, uh, that some of which had been released, some of which had not even been announced yet. Um, there were, it, within our circle, there were quite a few listed, including Street Fighter VI, uh, Mortal Kombat 12. Also a listing for Mortal Kombat Next Gen. Uh, there were also listings for... Uh, excuse me. Uh, Street, Street Fighter VI Tekken 8, the Mortal Kombat games. Uh, as well as uh, Injustice 3, Gods Will Fall. Now, what? every Yes, everyone lost their minds when this hit uh if you're not in interested in fighting games uh there were a whole bunch of other games listed in here even heads up just i mean heads up yep but uh Skullgirl second all, encore? nope that was not listed. what you said but you had uh remasters of gta 3 san andreas uh gears of war 6 Halo 5, a whole bunch of Final Fantasy games, a whole bunch of unannounced games were included, as well as games that were announced and coming soon. Um, G4, or in, NVIDIA, the company that owns uh, GeForce now, they responded to those uh, leaks earlier today, and they said, quote... NVIDIA is aware of an unauthorized published game list with both released and or speculative titles used only for internal tracking and testing. Inclusion uh, uh, on this list is neither confirmation nor an announcement of any game. 
NVIDIA took immediate action to remove access to the list. No confidential game builds or personal information were exposed. End quote. So, how likely is this to be true? Well, let's go through. Street Fighter VI. Most of these games are games, at least from the FGC point of view, were games that we are we know are coming at some point. Either we've heard some things or... You know, we, we expect companies to want to make money. Tekken 8. We know that Tekken 7 support is coming to its end. Uh, Street Fighter 5. They've already announced that this is going to be the final season. Uh, we did see in the Capcom data breach, uh, the ransomware breach, that there was at least some data in, the, in there about a Street Fighter 6 project. So those aren't real surprises. Uh... The, the one that's kind of in, up in the air is the Mortal Kombat and Injustice thing. We, we knew, you know, with recent history, the pattern from NRS has been MK, Injustice, MK, Injustice. Uh, they just announced that Mortal Kombat support is, has ended, so it makes sense that they're, making, they're working on Injustice 3. However, there's also a little bit of uncertainty about the relationship between NetherRealm and Warner Brothers going forward. So it was also possible that they were working on MK12 instead and, you know, expecting the Warner Brothers license to go elsewhere. It seems very unlikely that they're working on both simultaneously. So... In that regard, you know, a placeholder or a super, 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 super early build being tested uh, or just putzed around with or something else being listed under MK12 mm-hmm. or Injustice 3 or whichever one makes sense. But, you know, all of these games you can pretty much count on seeing eventually. Are they imminent? Maybe who knows, but yeah. So it, if if I had to put money on it, I do think we're getting Injustice Three first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's weird because I like you mentioned they had mentioned that they that since the since the whole Warner Brothers merge with I believe it was AT and T, uh, things have been like uncertain. And I think it was very easy to assume that they would just start working on MK12 since it's one of those things where it's like, hey, we have to have a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so sitting around and waiting for whether we're getting an Injustice or an MK seemed like a bad decision. So since they had the the absolute rights to Mortal Kombat, it seemed like that's the easy path to go. However, the thing that gets me is, and I'm going to pull it up again, is the the listing actually even has a subtitle to it. Uh, now, uh, I've seen a couple of posts saying that there was somebody else who leaked this title earlier, so it could have just been that, hey, since they're talking about placeholders, somebody probably saw that as the title for a leak and decided to put it on this list because they didn't think anybody was going to see it. It could be something else. Who knows? But I just find that very interesting that it's that specific. But... That's a wait and see type of thing, and that's a big uh oh from Nvidia. It's uh, someone in chat, specifically Finitude, asked, "Could these companies sue Nvidia for the leak?" I mean, companies have been sued for less. Ultimately, it comes down to whether or not these companies can prove that Nvidia leaking this list actively caused them certain amounts of damages, which becomes really difficult to prove unless this specific leak starts circulating heavy, 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 and they're able to like prove through negative press that people have stopped becoming interested in their product because they see that this is coming out. But Mm -hmm. once again, that's all speculation and things that are really difficult to prove in a court of law, specifically inside of California court where a lot of these companies are based. Mm -hmm. So um, could they sue? Yes. Will they sue? Probably not because game companies are, don't have enough money to go up against really large publishers like this. Yeah. And the other, the other crazy thing too is GeForce now has been shrouded in controversy because when they I first mean, sorry i was going to say nvidia in general i feel like mm-hmm. they've been 
this these last five years have been very telling about how much I feel NVIDIA cares about their consumers because like with the price of graphics cards going up, with the price of their external hard drives and a lot of their products going up without really any real regulation, with a lot of their drivers becoming like even worse over time and admittedly putting more strain on your machine exclusively with the intention of 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 uh, forcing you to purchase another another graphics card or another machine. Um, I feel like even before NVIDIA started moving into the gaming front as a publisher and a, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a platform, mm -hmm. they've had a lot of very negative feelings towards a lot. A lot of gamers have had very negative feelings about them as a publisher prior to that, just as a company. Um, mm -hmm. And that's mostly because of the fact that like they are not very good at regulating their prices at all. And they are being incredibly, incredibly taken over by the bots that we're seeing come out of like this whole crypto uh, yeah. flash happening over the last like 10 years now. So like mm -hmm. anything like this already, already like as someone who loves tech and as someone who watches and actively, you know, stays engaged with some of these larger companies that are doing things in the tech scene outside of gaming, it's not a good look at all for NVIDIA at all. And I can promise you, um, to be very honest, as someone who also watches the stock market, I would be very surprised if this didn't, affect their stock in some way shape or form mm -hmm. well and to add even on top of that geforce now itself as a product has already been super controversial because i don't know if you recall i think it was either last year or two years ago when they first announced geforce now and they started mm. putting games into geforce now a bunch of developers and a bunch of publishers said hey i didn't give you permission to put my game on this take mm -hmm. that off and they had to take it off yeah so it's one of those things where <laughs> I feel like this specific product of GeForce Now has already had a super rough start, and now it's getting even worse. It's like, whoa, where are they going to go from here? So, man, it's uh, trip after trip with NVIDIA here, uh, this like these last couple years. So we'll see what happens and what comes out of this. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll keep a finger on the pulse and see what comes out of it. Maybe they'll Sharpie. come out with a new graphics card and, you know, just surprise us all. Like, who mm -hmm. can expect what type of hits they'll come out with next, Elon? Maybe they're going to give us the NVIDIA Shield, too. Who knows? Does anybody have an NVIDIA Shield? Does anybody know what an NVIDIA God, Shield no. is? I don't know. Yes, anyway. I do, unfortunately. <laughs> Sad times for all of us. Uh, it's time. We have roughly two minutes, and we have a couple of quick hits that we need to get to. First... We already talked about you working with Future Club, Sharpie. Are you happy? I am so happy. It's been a long time coming. Everybody knows that my dream has been to work for them, and I'm very, very happy for this opportunity. Thank you so much to Franny at Future Club for giving this amazing opportunity to show my stuff for an amazing country and an ethical company that has stuck by me for a very long time and trusted me with a very, a very close community to my heart. So I just want to say thank you for that uh, publicly. There you go. Big round of applause for you. Congratulations. Uh, don't leave us, please. You're important uh, to us. Uh, next, Smash mod games are still getting canceled. They done, have done it again. There. So yeah, this just dropped a few hours before uh, before we went live. Uh, if you can pull up the quote, uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is the quote from Riptide. Could you pull that up, please? Mm -hmm. So we mentioned this on last week's show about how Riptide was contacted uh, by a Nintendo rep. And because of that, they had to cancel uh, the Project Plus event at their um, at their tournament. So Project Plus obviously being mod of Project M, which itself is a mod of Smash Brawl. Uh we saw a very similarly worded statement today, and this was from uh, LTC Esports, the group behind Low Tier City, another big smash, uh, Low Tide City, excuse me. Um, and they said, quote, uh, we were, uh, yesterday we were contacted by Nintendo regarding Project Plus, Beyond Melee, and 64 Remix at Low Tide City. Unfortunately, as a result of that conversation, we are removing these events from LTC. We understand how difficult this is 
for these communities, and we will soon be contacting all players registered for these events with further information regarding refunds. End quote. So, for the second time in three weeks, Nintendo has put the hammer down on uh, tournaments trying to run mod, you know, games that are modded versions of their base games that aren't being sold anymore. You know, you can't buy, uh, you can't buy 64, you can't buy Melee, you can't buy Brawl from Nintendo. You have to get those second hand, third hand. It also, what worries me more is the fact that these are so similarly worded. It feels like Nintendo is giving them the wording to use. That they're basically saying, okay, we want you, we not only want you to not run these games, but we want you to use these specific sets of wording to try and distance. What is that? Sorry. These that specific That was Nintendo running set- up to stop you from talking, yeah. Steve. I just blocked them. I blocked <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> they. They're trying to use this specific set of wording in order to sort of distance Nintendo from being at fault, even though we know it's Nintendo at fault for this. Mm -hmm. I worry about what that means for future events, because, Mm -hmm. you know, we saw them come down on Slippy. We've seen them come down on Project Melee or uh, Project M in the past. I mean, what... What are these communities to do? Well, it's really just the Smash community. Because, like, it's... I, I know you are saying communities and meaning the entirety of, like, every single Smash game ever made, including Smash 4 Ultimate specifically, is what we're probably talking about here. But, obviously, uh, PM, well, I, Melee, like, several yeah. different generations of Smash. But we're specifically talking about the Super Smash Brothers franchise, correct? And the Super Smash Brothers I community? Was, I was more referring to the communities around... Like uh, 64 Remix and Project Uh, M slash Project Plus, you know, because they're, you know, they're pouring their hearts into these games that Nintendo literally cannot make money off of. You know, I don't know how easy it is for them to to get the rights again uh, for some of these guest characters, uh, some of the agreements in terms of music and whatnot, and put it back on the market. So it, 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 the obvious well, this is costing us money argument isn't there. Granted, it is well within their legal rights to do this. Mm-hmm. But it feels like, even though I, I've said before that Nintendo doesn't really care about Smash, competitive Smash, and they want to put some distance between themselves and the competitive Smash scene, it does really feel like they are making this a bigger deal than it needs to be, and that they're going to be hurt more in the long run by this becoming an ongoing story rather than just letting it letting it play, letting these events run these games and let them get their couple thousand viewers and you know everybody moves on to the next tournament. I would agree with you. With the caveat being that a majority of people who actually enjoy and play Nintendo's products will never in any way, shape, or form play a Super Smash Brothers game competitively in their life. The people that it is actively affecting is like not even 5% of their audience. And that's just the unfortunate truth regarding it, which is why they can do things like this. And and ultimately, like, I I personally believe... um, as someone who knows a lot of people who happen to be other TOs and have, have made, unfortunately, similar statements regarding different types of games for different companies, um, I happen to know that while they may not be receiving all of the benefits from Nintendo, they're probably still receiving certain benefits that they're not able to publicly disclose. Um, and I also know that um, it's difficult because Nintendo is so large... Right? It's kind of like Disney in that boat. Like, I I remember I was watching something about Gravity Falls creator Alex something was writing and he was like, yeah. And they they literally took down his own tweet 
where he had a clip of his own video on his tweet promoting the fact that the video was on Netflix because he was the show's creator. And they took it down and gave him a DMCA warning and almost banned him. And he was like, Disney literally just banned me because I was promoting a show that I wrote for Disney that they told me to promote on this platform. And, he, and I think the exact phrasing he said was Disney is a big enough company that Disney can get confused about the way that Disney is supposed to be interacting with other aspects of Disney. Right. And I feel like Nintendo's in a very similar boat, especially when it comes to different aspects of gaming. Um, and that's the way I look at it. It doesn't make it any better. It just makes me less mad, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame, man. Is, well, no, my, my, my thought was going to be, is the solution moving to a different game? But that's a really that was mine. answer to that was mine. a complicated problem. Yeah. My answer Sorry, was Steve. leave, leave, leave smash. Like yeah. it's, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to come to, especially when you build up this entire community and you love mm -hmm. the game and you love the community. But when a developer, when a publisher shows you that this is what they're doing, it's, it's really hard for me to recommend staying, you know? Yeah. Um, Let's all go to Nickelodeon All-Stars Battle Royale. Uh, wait, no, All-Stars Brawl, sorry. Uh, problem solved. Let's I'm all kidding. play Skullgirls. <laughs> Let's all play Skullgirls. Last but not least, before we leave, I know we're super over on time. Uh, Dra uh, Dragon Ball Fighters World Championship schedule. It's here. Steve. Yeah. So this was just announced earlier this week. Uh, the online schedule uh, for the online Masters event of the DBFC World Championship. Uh, it starts this weekend with U.S. West. So if you are uh, on the western half of the United States and you want to get in on it, uh, you might want to sign up right now. Uh, next week, we've got a couple spots in Europe, including uh, the Germany slash Sweden region and the U.K. Ireland region. Uh, the next week is Japan. Then you've got the Spanish region, uh, U.S. East after that, and then Europe, including the French region, uh, closing things out on October 24th. So uh, plenty of online action. Also, uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at the, um, at the ticker, we do have a list of events going on, including uh, Thursday night, the... And the uh, season three finale, the long-awaited finale of the Street Fighter League. Mm -hmm. uh, so the one that got canceled, due, uh, postponed, and then postponed again to mm -hmm. due to COVID. Uh, that's going to take place this Thursday. And uh, Capcom is going to have some sort of uh, costume announcement during that stream. Great. More costumes. The Chundle is really shaping up to be great. Now, we're really over time, so thank you, everybody, for uh, hanging out with us and listening slash watching to another episode of Best of Five. If you have anything you want to talk to us about, send us an email, bestofvshow at gmail.com. Uh, we are monitoring that, and we'll uh, take your email into consideration. It'll be seen. And, you know, if you just want to say hi, do that, too. Uh, I've been Elon. That, all the way on the end, is Sharpie, the purple Sharpie. Uh, now... Uh, future club represent well future club employee not representative I, I, I it's a contracted position but yeah there you go uh, thank you Sharpie for joining us always awesome to have you this is Steve the main squeeze Ace King Officer Jurek you can follow him at, at Ace King Officer on Twitter and other platforms I assume Steve any final thoughts no let's uh, sign it off Okay, that's it for today's show. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. We'll catch you all next week. Every real show has a sign-off phrase. Good night, Turd Ferguson. <laughs>